take the tootsie roll. By the way, you're you're probably not going to be able to eat this. Well, I shouldn't say that. You might be able to eat this tootsie roll, depending on how desperate you are. The rocking is indicative of something not clearing. So I took the pan off. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to this channel on this fine Sunday morning. It's nice and early. It's a bit chilly outside. I wanna take you back to the six liter build here. Um, I've probably taken this block apart six, seven times, uh, running into a few issues, um, clearances, etc. But ultimately what I ended up with is the LS2 crank back in instead of the LQ4. Let me explain to you guys what happened. So when I originally took this block apart, you guys know that I found out that the the journal bearings for the mains were undersized. And then after I found that out, I just so happened to look at the bearings for the rods, which I also found out the pistons were uh, bored over on the, on the original LS2 block. Um, I figured, well, if the mains are undersized, maybe the rods are undersized, and they sure were. So I ended up uh, picking up some uh, King bearings, um, undersized 10 under. Oh, I'm sorry, they were over, the bearings were, no, yeah, they were undersized. Undersized? Anyway, the, the crank was ground down, so they were undersized uh, 10.010, 10th oh, of an inch or 0.25 millimeters get my measurements confused here yeah so tenth of an inch or 0.025 or 0.25 millimeters i feel like i feel like i'm telling you guys the wrong thing but anyway so 0.010 of an inch undersized um, for the crank, which means that the uh, the bearings had to be um, oversized or undersized, sorry. So I put those in <clears throat> here and put the LS2 crank back in. Now I know what you're wondering, why would I do that? Why didn't I just keep this nice fine LQ4 crank here? Well, take a look at this snout back here. See how thick that is? <clears throat> this snout, you can't see because I got the back plate on. But the snout back here is, I guess not the snout, it's the rear end. But anyway, um, is like 11 millimeters shorter. So as I was lining everything up, you know, I was kind of thinking ahead, okay, well, when I make the transmission up, what is this gonna look? So I started thinking about it. If the, if the back end of the crank comes out, it probably came out to where this was. And then in addition to that, there was this ring here. So it probably came out to like right here. My thoughts were, well, how is this gonna mate up to the transmission? So then I started looking at this flex plate. <clears throat> and then I had this, I saw that this, um, this groove here kind of bumps out. So when you bolt it, you bolt it on this way. So this part, this part's the transmission part, this part is the engine part. So my thoughts were, okay, I'll just swap it over. It was roughly 10, 10 millimeters of this bump out and everything was gonna be fine. Well, when you do that, then that means that the transmission has to bolt on here, which if you look at the torque converter, which this is not the torque converter I'll be using, but it'll, it'll look like just like this, it's flat. So, it wouldn't actually bolt up <clears throat> here because this is not flat. See that? So then my thoughts were, well, what if I just use the other flex plate that came with the LQ4 block? Maybe that'll work. So flex plate, same size, same tooth count, same pattern. However, the holes for the transmission didn't line up. So after about two hours of trying to figure a way around it, I figured, why don't I just throw the crank back in, uh, take everything apart, and um, 
just be done with it that way. I don't have to sit there and guess if the back end is going to work. I know the LS2 crank works. Obviously, it was in the block. I know that the transmission is going to mate up to it. It was already uh, made it up to the crank before. The block clearances um, were good with the new bearings. So I went ahead and tossed it back in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue the build. So what's next up is we are going to go ahead and toss the cam back in. Lifters and do the push rods. Flip it around. Um, throw the heads back on, pan, front cover, basically try to assemble the, the block as much as possible before I start tossing it back in. So I'll go ahead and put you guys up on a stand so you guys can watch this wonderful potential failure or success, we never know, um, ensue. All right, so I ran into a little bit of a problem. As I was installing the oil pan, I noticed that it wasn't seating correctly. You guys can see the gap there. All right, so the rocking is indicative of something not clearing. So I took the pan off and to spare you the details, Basically what I did was I removed the oil pickup tube and put the oil pan back on and it sat down perfectly. So it's not the windage tray. It is this pickup tube here. It is hitting well resting on that guy there. So I got a couple of options here. I can either break this solder or weld and press this down and re-weld it here um, that's that's option like Z for me because I really don't feel like breaking out all the welding stuff for aluminum the other part the other thing that I could do is I could cut this right down the middle here and then stagger it where one goes behind the other and just drill a hole push this down drill a hole and then put two bolts in to hold it down that way there's no welding involved and nothing can fail in there so i think i'm going to go with option b or a which is the cutting first and then uh, if that doesn't work then we'll reassess and potentially have to weld the other thing to take into consideration is this seat's flush here and it's perfectly lined out running along the windage tray going up so it does have the capability this oil pickup tube does have the capability of going down the problem is this starts to get misaligned so there's gonna be a minor bend that has to occur in here somewhere I'm probably thinking I'll bend it along these lines here somewhere ever so slightly just to bring this down and I'll show you guys how to use a Tootsie Roll to uh, make sure that you have enough clearance between your oil pickup and where is it? your oil pan here because you don't want the oil pickup stuck along the bottom but you also don't want it too high up so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off I'll modify it and we'll be back in two seconds all right so I have the pickup tube cut, or at least the, the leg that holds the pickup tube, and I bent it right here. This thing's actually, so I misspoke earlier, this thing's actually uh, steel, not aluminum. It feels aluminum, but it definitely is not aluminum. Um, took a little bit of force to try to get this thing to bend. Um, the only bending point I can find is here. 
So, got it down maybe half an inch. Um, it's a little bit of an angle, kind of backwards. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take a Tootsie Roll and I'm going to place it at different points here just to check the clearance um, between the oil pan and this guy here. So, show you guys how to do that here. Well, there's not really much to it. You basically just take the Tootsie Roll. By the way, you're you're probably not going to be able to eat this. Well, I shouldn't say that. You might be able to eat this Tootsie Roll, depending on how desperate you are. But basically, take this thing, warm it up a little bit in your hand. You can also do this with like putty or I don't know, anything else that basically collapses. The, the main thing here is you want to make sure that you understand your clearance. Um, I forgot what the clearance needs to be between here and the oil pan. Maybe a quarter of an inch, something like that. Um, but you certainly don't want it completely up against the oil pan. So I'm going to go ahead and place it at its highest point here. And then see, see where it lands. And then after I'm done with all this, obviously I'm going to go ahead and um, clean up everything to make sure there's no residue which typically there's not so here's the finished product so I went ahead and put this guy on I snugged this bolt here this just kind of hung out here here's the finished product it'll look something like this you'll have the bottom the top if the top here is not flat that means it's not making contact so make sure you fluff it up enough to make contact and you basically measure between the lowest point here and the top and you should be good um, so I'm going trying to get to like a quarter of an inch if I can between here and across this pickup tube um, the one I'm worrying about is this side here so I'm going to go ahead and do it here, do it here, see what the clearance is, and if I have to adjust, I'll adjust. So I believe I have everything fixed or spaced out correctly. So I have this guy. He's sitting flush a little bit up in the back. Maybe, I don't know, half a millimeter. It's not going to matter because there's a O-ring in there. Um, I went ahead did a little bit of bending here. <sighs> bent this guy, bent this guy up a little bit just to make sure that I can drop it. So you can see how much of a drop it was. It's roughly um, almost a, eh, not even a, maybe like an eighth of an inch. Um, it's a little deceptive because this is bent here and this is bent. So it's a little deceptive. I'd probably say I knocked it down an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch potentially so I added the gasket on there when you're spacing this out finally make sure you add a gasket went ahead and there's my infamous Tootsie Roll I'm gonna go ahead and put the pan on and then measure out the space again looking for probably a quarter of an inch to half an inch maybe a little bit less overall so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So the pan is off. I'm gonna go ahead and check out what the thickness is. Go ahead and this, and we are at roughly three eighths of an inch. A little more than three eighths of an inch. Um, kind of slopes a little bit, but once I tighten everything down, I'll lose a little bit of space here because when I when I was spacing it out, I just leaned onto the uh, oil pan, so I'm sure I'll lose a little bit more. But overall, it should be pretty good. I'm not too concerned about um, it being able to uh, suck in oil and. Don't want to spend too much time welding here, so it looks like absolute trash. Um, but I didn't know if this was brazed or soldered or I, I don't know what this is. Um, but I didn't want to do anything to 
had that come apart on me so just hit this really quick cleaned everything up got all the boogers up had everything covered when I was welding so everything's good nice and clean I'm gonna go ahead and throw the pan on temporarily we have to flip the motor over get the heads on get everything else squared away and then start tapping the oil pan for the um, for the turbo